Okay, video lesson part two. Hopefully you've completed Down by the Bay and on Frozen Pond. Maybe you've left a couple of questions not quite done, but you've basically got the idea of what those two tell you. And then you've printed out a copy of this. If you haven't printed out a copy of what you're seeing on the screen there, then go to the website and print that out right now. And then well, we're going to walk through this together and see what you should have sort of learn from down by the bay and on frozen pond maybe it wasn't perfectly clear but it should give you the idea of what we're seeing here so this one's called uh, rectangle optimi optimization summary so a summary of what you've seen maximizing area and minimizing perimeter for rectangles i just want to mention that at the start when you maximize area you automatically minimize the perimeter when you minimize the perimeter you automatically maximize the area so those two things happen at the same time when in rectangles so for four-sided rectangular enclosure, the maximum area and the minimum printer, perimeter occurs when we have a square. So that really gives away what you're supposed to see in those investigations. Example, perimeter 140. If you had a perimeter of 140, we'd want a square, so we'd want to take the 140 and divide it among the four sides there. That's how we find out uh, what side length we should use for the square. And when I go 140 divided by 4, what I get is 35. So that will be the rectangle that maximizes the area. Now, some people say, well, a square is not a rectangle. It technically is. A square is a specific rectangle with the same side lengths. So a square fits under the qualifications of a rectangle. Because a rectangle is a shape with four sides, and the sides are all right angles. So a square fits in that. If you didn't think so before, well, that's what we decide in math, that a square will be a rectangle. So for maximum area with four-sided figure, let me just highlight that, because it changes if it's not four sides, if we're not um, fencing all four sides or if we're not uh, doing perimeter around all four sides. So maximum area when we have a square and also minimum perimeter. Now, for a three-sided enclosure, the maximum area occurs when the lengths add up to the width. And by lengths in this picture, I mean these two lengths here add up to that width there. That's what you should have found in your investigation. So, for instance, if you've got a 60 meters of fence here, to go around a, and you only have to do perimeter around three sides, you still divide it by four. And so I get 15, but what I mean is 15 goes here, 15 goes here, and 30 goes there. So the divide by four still works, but the divide by four tells you what length to use on each side. Okay? Uh, now, minimizing perimeter. The minimum perimeter occurs when you use a square. So whether it's maximizing area or minimizing perimeter with four sides, we use a square either way. Now, if they give you the area they want, finding the side length is a little bit different because what you want to do is you want to find uh, the side length to be, it'll be x squared equals 81. So you actually want to take the square root here to get these two sides. So when you're given your perimeter, you got to divide it to get the sides. When you're given the area, you got to square root it. And for a three-sided enclosure, the minimum air perimeter occurs when, again, just like before, the length add up to the width. The lengths, did I put lengths up there? Yes, I did. Okay, so when the lengths add to the width, and what I mean by length and width here is I'm going to put length here and then width there. So those two L's have to add up to W. Now this is a little bit more difficult because the area has to come out to 18. So you got to think in your head, what numbers can I multiply by so that when I multiply them together, I get 18 and one has to be double the other. That is difficult. You really have to think that through. The numbers aren't so bad here where you couldn't just reason it out and come up with three and six. But what you could do is say, listen, this W, I know what it's got to be. It's got to be 2L. And so that means 2L times this other L has to be 18. And what I get is L squared equals 9. I can square root that, and I can get the length would be 3. So this would be 3, and this would be 6, and this would be 3. So that's an algebraic way to do it uh, instead of just trying to think of the numbers. Um, and now, I, not mentioned in the investigations was these. For a two-sided rectangular enclosure, the minimum perimeter occurs when 
we have a square again. So if we're doing um, two-sided, it, it's square as well. And so to find the lengths here, we'd go square root 25 again to get that this would be five meters by five meters. The way I remember it is I say, listen, the amount of fence you use on the lengths has to be the same as the, the amount on, you use on the widths. That's true in all these situations. So whether the lengths are divided up among a square or uh, among a three-sided, uh, you're only doing perimeter around three sides, the lengths are always going to add up to the widths. So that's a, a fast way to remember it. So take a second, maybe pause the video to, and try each of these so that you uh, know how to do these. There's uh, some practice questions that are a lot like the homework questions for this section. So it says, draw the rectangle with maximum area, four-sided enclosure with perimeter 10. So 10 divided by four, each side is going to have 2.5 meters. So I need a square with sides 2.5 meters. And to indicate that it's a square, I'll just put the lines there. Uh, Three-sided enclosure with perimeter 30. Um, again, we go 30 divided by 4 is 7.5, and that tells us what lengths to use here. I'd use 7.5 meters and 7.5 meters, but then this is left over at 15 meters. You can check to see if that works, that the sides add up to 30, and you do get a maximum area and minimum perimeter. Remember that. When, when you get maximum area, you'll get minimum perimeter. Uh, draw the rectangle with minimum perimeter. So we want area 121. So we do want a square here. And these sides are going to be x and x. But we want the area to be 121. So x squared would be 121. Square root of 121 is the 11. So each of these is 11 meters. Four-sided figure, so a square again. What operation to find the length in this problem? It's a square root that we use. Uh, this one, this is the tough one. A three-sided enclosure with area 32. The algebraic way to do it is go, okay, I know if this is L and this is L, I need this to be double that length, which is 2L, which means length times width would be 2L times the L has to come out to 32. The area has to come out to 32, so 2L times L has to be 32. I get 2L squared equals 32. Divide by 2. A little equation solving here. And then, so if I want L, I got to do square root of 16 is 4. Now, lots of the questions in the homework, the numbers are easy enough that you don't have to do that process. You could just look at it and go, okay, what two numbers multiply together to give 32 and one is double the other one? But sometimes you might have to, so it's, it's a good procedure to know. Last one, a two-sided enclosure. And what they mean by that is maybe you're, uh, I'll do a real thick line here already got a corner you're building your uh, fence or your garden into and so the only things you have to fence is here and here and with two sides again we go for a square will give us the maximum area and minimum perimeter so i get x squared equals 10. Ooh, square root 10 so this time um, when i get down to this it's not one that can easily be done in your head so if you've been doing them in your head Notice that there's no reason the numbers have to work out nicely. You might have to go to your calculator and actually do this square root thing. And I get 3.2 meters to one decimal place. Notice that if I use 3.2 times 3.2, I won't get exactly 10. It'll just be pretty close because I've rounded off. So 3.2 meters, 3.2 meters. Okay, so now the idea is, if you go to the website, it won't look exactly like mine on my page, but it'll be pretty close, is... For lesson six, Monday, April the 6th, we scroll down to it here. You have done the first video lesson, which just told you to do down by the bay and told you to do um, on frozen pond. Then this video did the rectangle optimization summary. That's there down at the bottom here, these two here. Then, uh, well, it's just in Word and PDF. Then, now that you've done that with me, you can go ahead and do the homework, which is page 431, number 1 to 11. A lot of it goes very fast. There's a couple little tricky ones, but you'll find that even though it's 11 questions, I think now that you've seen this lesson and seen that optimization sum summary, and certainly if you copied it down carefully, um, you'll find the homework pretty